love you so much. I've been praying for you as I've been studying the word and spending time in the presence of the Lord. I've been earnestly praying for you and earnestly seeking to hear from the Lord in the moment of what exactly that will touch your life today. And let's just pray together. Lord, thank you for today, for this day that you ordained. Thank you for all of the things that went on and led up to this day. Thank you, God, for everything that's happened up to this point. And thank you for this moment right now. And thank you, God, for the hope of the future. And thank you what you, what you're doing in this house and, and what's to come. Lord, rest upon the hearts in your sanctuary this day, this morning, right now, Lord. We desire your presence. We desire your un mistakable touch. Lord, touch our lives, God. We love you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. The touch of Jesus is so powerful, and it's so necessary to be able to experience what you were designed to experience, what you were created for. There's a level of joy. There's a, a shout of praise that you just haven't felt yet. You may think you've had some moments in your life of divine inspiration, but you've not seen anything yet. Because the overwhelming joy that bubbles up within my heart when I praise the Lord and pray for you and set your life upon the feet of Jesus, upon the throne, the mercy seat. And when I pray for you, I see something better than that's ever happened yet. The best is yet to come, but it's at hand, it's near, it's right here. I, I want us to be prepared. Be prepared for a generous gift from the Lord. This is a special year, but this is a special, very special day in our lives. And he wants you to experience his touch. And I want to excite you and inspire you of how special it is and warn you, you don't want to miss it. You would weep and wail if you missed it. You would be so upset if you missed it. Oh, what God is doing, what's already begun. It's so amazing. I know how to get excited and do cartwheels and, and run and I got, you know, I, I get so excited. I do something and then I just run around the house. Me and my cute little dog, we just do laps. I get so excited. But any excitement I've ever had, when I'm in the presence and I just, oh, it's like I just get a taste. Oh, if I got a whole drink of water, of the presence of the Lord, I, I don't even know I would... I would just like spontaneously combust. And it's not just some hope in the sky. It's a strong, concrete, real covenant promise with power and truth. And it was spoken forth from the King of Kings and it shall come to pass. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I read you just a few scriptures this morning, I think of 
how we praise the same God. And I've been studying David, such a worshiper, because the Lord put on my heart to remind people to never find yourself in a position where you're pushing worship to the back burner. Worship has got to be what we're excited about to do. Worship is amazing. Lifting our hands, praising the Lord, singing. When, read the Psalms this week. I hope you get inspired to read the Psalms. It's a bunch of songs. Love songs to the Lord. And I'll just, I'll just tell you that David sings. And in Psalm 119, 96, he sings out, I've seen the limits of perfection. Oh, your commands. Oh, they're limitless. I've seen the best that there is. Have you ever felt like that? I'm so blessed. Lord, I've seen all that you can do. I'm so excited for what you've done. These miracles, you saved me. Lord, I should be dead, but you saved me. You saved my family. You healed my brother from cancer. You've done all these mighty miracles. You helped my mom raise me on one single family income. You took care of me. You blessed my children. You're so faithful, God. Oh, it's as good as it is. It's amazing. But we've not seen anything yet. So as David is like, I'm the most blessed man in the world. I've seen a limit to all perfection. Oh, but the king was coming for him. And in Zechariah, meanwhile, they were shouting another song to rejoice greatly. Let's follow along in, in Zechariah 9, starting with 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. That's me and you. That's not just girls. That's all of us. Shout. Shout in triumph. Shout like it's a football game. Shout like there's a sale at H&M. Shout like you found the yellow coat. Shout like you found what you've been looking for. You lost your diamond ring and you found it. Shout. Wouldn't you be so excited if you lost a diamond and you found it? Be like, woo! Woo! And people would be like, what is going on with her? Be like, oh my, I just, uh, I just found my wedding ring. Oh, it was, it was lost for two years. I've been looking everywhere for it. I found it. It's amazing. I'm so excited. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And he will proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion will extend from sea to sea, from the Euphrates to the ends of the earth. Because of the blood of my covenant, I will release your prisoners, the Lord will save his people. And, and God will save them as the flock of his people for like jewels in a crown. They'll sparkle over his land. The Lord's calling us to sparkle. Calling you to say, I found the Lord. And every day his blessings are more and more. And I think I have seen it all and seen the best. And I'm the most blessed woman who's turning 50 in the whole world. And then tomorrow I'm going to be like, now this is the best ever. And then the next day I'm going to be like, now this is the best ever. And I want you to share in this joy. It's way too much to keep shut up in my bones anymore. It's way too much that God has had to teach this girl with a heritage from Finland, who, which means genetically I should be very, very, very shy. 
and know how to sew and sing. And, and it's like, what happened? It, if I'm just shy, sewing and singing, it would be shut up in my bones and the rocks would cry out. There's so much more I can share to you, but thank God that I was able to teach the Bible study this week, so it's okay. I'm good. I'm good for a week. I'll see you next week. But in Luke 19, the unstoppable king, because the kingdom of heaven is near. Every kingdom, you know, a kingdom is a concrete thing. It's a concrete truth. A co- it's, it's spoken forth in the concrete sense. And in order for it to be a kingdom, it has to have a king. And his name is unmistakably, undeniably Jesus Christ of Nazareth, King of kings, enthroned upon high. It's so exciting. And when he came, he was coming in and And in Luke 19, verse 28, it was talking of how he was going into Jerusalem. He was approaching Bethany, a hill called the Mount of Olives. And he sent two of his disciples. I just need two people to get this. He sent two people ahead of him. And said something. He gave direction and they obeyed. He said, go to the village ahead of you. You'll find a colt. It'll be there. You untie it and bring it to me. Yes, Lord. They brought it to him. But look at the details. In verse 30 says, Jesus said to the two disciples. And like, let's just say it's us. We're two people. We're one person. Here we are, right? He's speaking to you right now. Matt, he's speaking to you right now, Joyce. He's speaking to me. Mindy from Finland, he's speaking. Go to the village ahead of you. Oh, he's sending me somewhere I haven't been before. As you enter it, you'll find something to bring to me. Part of my plan, which no one has ever written. Something new. Some wild territory, something that no one's ever ridden. And he says, untie it. Let's get loose from the limits. Let's go forward into new territory and bring it here. Let's bring our fresh new oil. Let's bring our freshness to the king of kings. And those who were sent in the head found it. People asked, why are you untying the colt? We know the answer because the Lord needed it. People, when you start doing unprecedented things, unprecedented things, things that were in the village ahead of you, things that haven't moved to the East Coast yet, things that are just out of reach and he sent you there and you're moving ahead. You're a visionary, New Lifers. People will ask you, why? Why are you going there? Why are you doing that? Why this? Why this? There's a bunch of things I would do different. Why this? Why this? Why this? Why this? Why this? Because the Lord needed it. 